If you have an activity the child doesn't feel comfortable with and doesn't like, it doesn't mean to stop it. That's our tendency. Oh, they don't like it, so we won't do it. My, my middle grandson was very much on the sensory uh, scale, very much would have been labeled autistic, and it happened. And it came home from living in Japan once, and I went, oh my gosh, the child would only wear cotton PJs or sweatpants, would not wear any other clothing. He would only eat chicken nuggets and french fries. He wouldn't drink anything, but boy, when we were coloring those Easter eggs, and I asked him to pour that vinegar water down, colored water down to the sink, and he drank it instead. Very, very sensory. Well, he also didn't like to be touched or hugged. And I'm like, I'm sorry. Grandma's hugged their grandbabies, and you're going to get 12 a day. <laughs> He's my best hugger now out of all my grandchildren. It's not personality, it's just not their desire. It's not normal. So we have to input the information until it normalizes. The gloves will also normalize if a child is hypo-sensitive. The same activity fixes it, whether it's hypo or hyper. Isn't that great? So the kid almost sitting out in the yard playing, oh, look at them, they're so happy, they're playing. And then the parent goes to get the child, and they're sitting in a red ant mount. And the ants are crawling all over the baby, biting, biting, biting that little child. I have had that happen with families. The child didn't feel it. We had to feel. So the same gloves, whether it's hypo or hypersensitive, we've got to have to Okay, okay, so <laughs> try to get a stimulation. That's the head, face, neck area, very light to start out. We said once, once or twice a day for two minutes to start out very light. Kind of start from the center, go over the eyes, the nose, the mouth, especially if you've got a child that has like kind of slack lips, longer articulation, spend a little bit more time in the mouth, go down the neck, sides, up into the head area. Usually they don't like the head. If they're not going to like anything, this is what they're not going to like. I'm getting to the ears, I feel my stick finger right in the ear canal, but just kind of get around the outside, particularly if they have hypersensitive hearing. Then you go back and do exactly the same thing, only fur. Okay, and this is what they'll usually enjoy. Be very careful over the eye sockets because you don't want to poke the eye in. So just kind of go around, get in the nose, the mouth, get in there. Be careful again over the larynx so you don't want to poke the nose box in. And that's good for kids that uh, can't stand haircuts, don't like their hair cut uh, or combed, uh, have auditory problems, uh, maybe smell issues that will help stimulate the trigeminal nerve. The trigeminal nerve is the largest nerve that sends all the information to the brain from the eyes, ears, nose, and mouth. If the brain isn't getting the information correctly, it's not smelling right, it's not tasting right, it's not hearing right, it's not seeing right, then that nerve is not working, so we need to stimulate it. Okay, uh, if you have a child that really doesn't like an activity, here's a trick. Get a little digital timer. Set it for 10 seconds. When the timer goes off, you're dead. Not your child's fussing. Then, as they can tolerate 10 seconds, set your timer for 20 seconds. And then 30 seconds. And gradually build up to your time because the child will learn the timer is ending the activity, not their fussing. And not you. It's an inanimate object. The timer hasn't gone off. And you guys have to be discerning is this kind of behavior or is it actual neurological stuff that's, that's causing discomfort for the child? Okay, mouse stimulation. There are several ways to do mouth stimulation, but one great way is with this chusette. Every bird inside the mouth you can get. If you have a child who can't even stand in the in the mouth, then you start on the outside. And you just stimulate on the outside until you can work your way in. If you have a picky eater, this is really important. If you have a child with any articulation problems, this is imperative to do mouth stimulation. If you have a picky eater, also ask in what we call taste and odors. Tastes are, you're going to cycle through some salt granules on the tip of the tongue, some sugar or stevia or honey on the tip of the tongue, and then lemon juice on the two sides of the tongue. For one minute, salt, sugar, lemon. Salt, sugar, lemon. Salt, sugar, lemon. For one minute. You're sending input to the brain for those tastes of sour and sweet and, and, you know, we don't do bitter. We don't need to stimulate bitter. 
So then you also want to have a lot of good smelling input of pleasant odors. If you have a picky eater, we highly recommend food odors. Horseradish, vinegar, garlic, onions. garlic, onions. And you rotate through for a couple of minutes all these food smells. And it's even more efficient to do trigeminal stim first, mouth stim second, taste third, and then smells, and not have your eating meal. Doing that sequence right prior to a meal is very effective in helping with picky eating. Hot and cold children that don't discern temperature appropriately, your child never dresses um, for, for the temperature of being underdressed or overdressed, it doesn't matter which direction it goes, if you're hypo or hyper to temperature. Gel packs are the best. You can use wheat bags. I always tell my parents get two. One goes in the fridge, one in the freezer, in the fridge, and the other one you can put in a hot bowl of water, not so hot that you burn the child, but hot enough to get the brain's attention. All you have to do then, I, I usually tell them to start with the hot or very warm. Then tips to shoulders, it's, it, you know, a minute, two minutes total. So you're not spending much time. You're going about that speed. Do the limbs, both arms, um, legs, and then follow up with cold. And if the child is very hyper, like really sensitive, you might have to start out with like lukewarm and just like tepid and then gradually pull it to the extremes of temperature.